Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to have the opportunity to work on a Penn Spinfisher 5 6500 large saltwater fishing reel. And this is the fifth generation and now on a sixth and possibly even a seventh. But uh, the Spinfisher 5 is a uh, standard, uh, certainly for, for ocean fishing from the surf. It's a great uh, reel. This one uh, hasn't been serviced in a while, so we're going to show you how to take this reel apart how to service it, how to keep it fishing for a long time to come. And we're going to do that by ex first removing the exterior parts. As I do that, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel, particularly if you like the art of fish reel service and repair. If you like to see how reels are made, learn a little bit about their history, a little bit about who the manufacturers are and the like, well, this is a good place to uh, kind of see that and learn about that. So. I, uh, going to ask you to do that and if you do that please use the notification button that'll let you know when I'm posting and you can determine if that's a fishing reel that you want to watch and learn more about okay I like to put a rubber band uh, on these reels when they come in with line because that line tends to separate and get caught in things so I just use a little rubber band and it also reminds me that I've worked on that reel we're going to remove the handle this one is mounted on the left hand side you want to turn it opposite of the way you crank if the handle is a screw-in handle, which is what this handle is. Some of the reels that you'll work on will have a screw holding a shaft on this side, so you need, you need to be aware of that. Next up, what we want to do is take the side case off. There are four screws that are holding that side case on. I like to break those screws with a flat-bladed screwdriver and then switch over and uh, remove them the rest of the way with a uh, Phillips head. I guess this is some kind of a machine screw that, uh, well, they have a different uh, different bit, but you can uh, take them all, all the way out with a flat blade if you like, or you can take it all the way out with a uh, Phillips head. I just find that the Phillips head, when using it on this kind of a screw, if those screws are over tightened or they've salted in, a little bit more difficult to break that seal. All right, this is the third one. When I take my pieces and parts out, I put them into a parts tray, and my parts tray enables me to locate them when it's time for reinstall. This one happens to be a fast food container. It's got eight corners on it, and I, uh, I like to take the sub-assemblies and put them in different corners. That way I've kept them a little bit uh, separated when it comes time to looking for them to reinstall. Those four case screws are out. We should be able to remove the case now. These cases have gotten a little bit better. They've gotten a water seal on them now. So you're going to find that there is a little rubber grommet or, or gasket that uh, surrounds the case. If that pops out, just reset it. And what I want to do next is I would like to pull this down so that we have access to the two screws that are on the crosswind block. This is a metal cased wheel. Uh, that's perfect for salt water because you're not going to get a lot of flex in those cases like you would with a graphite or a plastic case or a partial case. There are two screws that are holding the axle shaft in. That's the top one. Here's the bottom one. And interestingly enough, on this reel, one of the reels that I've uh, one of the points that I found is a failure point on this reel is there's a bearing right here that rides up and down with the crosswind block that from time to time becomes elongated and well it just uh, starts rubbing and making a lot of noise. With those two screws out, hold the crosswind block, pull the axle shaft out. Hopefully it came out nice and easy. If it didn't come out nice and easy, you want to check to make sure that that axle shaft isn't bent. They do bend and under load. Okay, with that out, we're going to remove the screw that's holding the rotor nut in. There's a little tie-down harness clip here. Again, find another corner in my parts tray for that and for this. And then this would be a good place, if you're not doing a video, this would be a good place to, to take a picture of what the reel looks like before you go much further. There's a top screw here and then of course we have the assembly down below and pictures help you to recover in the event that well maybe you've forgotten something along the way well I'm going to go for a deep socket now 
in this case that proto nut wasn't tight all the way so I was able to remove it just by using my hand pressure on that nut. <laughs> if it's over tightened that is a 12 millimeter and you need a deep socket you can't get a wrench in over the lip so you're going to need a socket wrench to do that. And then I'm going to pull up and out on this. Okay we've removed that. The spin fisher itself which maybe with the exception of this, this side bearing here and I'm, as I mentioned this tends to to get a lot of play in it for some reason and uh, well just check that as you're doing the service on your reel. So much of the service of a reel is cleaning, inspection, replacing worn parts, and relubricating and reassembling. So if you can get the pattern down in terms of the steps you want to follow, your organization in terms of how you uh, take the parts, what sequence you take them off in, what you do with them, and how you put them back together again, well, you can pretty much work on a lot of reels using that same process and approach. Particularly these pen reels. The pen spinning reels, well, there's not a lot of difference between uh, a lot of these versions of the reel. You'll have the, the spin fisher, the battle, the uh, pursuit, the fierce. They're all pretty much the same kind of setup. Just uh, Rinse that bearing off, uh, get the old creases out of it. You want to test this one. This is a shielded bearing, it's not a sealed bearing. So just check it, make sure it turns free and easy. When you remove that bearing, notice that there is a shim washer here that uh, sits on the main bearing, uh, on the main gear. And well, this is kind of what we expected to see. There's just some old greases and the like in here. They've, uh, it's been a while since this wheel's been serviced. That's probably what the causes of some of the noise here and I'm going to use a shot of penetrating oil and a cotton swab to clean up the grease on the inside of this. Once I do that I'm going to take a hard bristle brush you can use a toothbrush if you like this is just a, a dollar store brush take it and then I'm going to pull it out onto that paper towel on my table. I do that for two reasons. One is I don't want to transfer the grease from one slot to the next, and the other is I don't want that sitting on my bench for my next project. So that paper towel does a kind of dual purpose there. Okay, well we've cleaned up the main gear. You want to inspect the teeth. You want to make sure they're all uniform. Make sure that there's no obvious dents or dings or anything. And check them from both sides. Check the peaks of the teeth on the X side, on the outside, and then uh, the lines for the inner teeth. And that'll tell you a lot. There's, there's times when I've worked on a reel and I can't figure it out for the life of me, and it turns out to be a worn or a warped gear. And uh, again, nothing should escape you in terms of doing the examination. Don't assume. We all know what the definition of assume is. Okay, we are going to take out the oscillation gear. Do the same thing as kind of muddy grease on this. So you want to clean it off the back. Do the same thing. I'll use some penetrating oil on the face here. Kind of wipe that down. And again, take that hard brush and pull through on the teeth of the oscillation gear. And I combine steps here because I'm examining the teeth as I'm cleaning them. All that's left to do on the bottom then would be to clean the case. But I'm going to take the pinion gear out first. And the reason for that is I want to make sure I get underneath where that pinion gear uh, is in the case when I go to clean it. There's three screws that are holding this uh, pinion gear and bearing assembly on. This bearing assembly houses the uh, top and bottom gear, uh, top and bottom bearing anti-reverse clutch and collar. This is fairly standard issue, if you will, on a pen reel. So there should be no surprises in here. Again, I take the three screws out and make sure they're all the same size. Now, I've worked on enough of these that I know they're the same size, but when you're doing a reel, particularly if you haven't worked on one in a while, or maybe it's your first one, always check. Because there's a lot of times where manufacturers will substitute a screw and uh, well you might be in trouble if it goes uh, in the wrong slot. This is um, kind of symmetrical so any uh, any point 
and hole in there can be reused. We're going to pull the assembly out now. And this is kind of standard again. You have a bearing top and you have one here. You have the anti-reverse clutch and sleeve and a carrier here. Well, that's going to give me the access now to clean the inner case. And we'll just do the same thing, kind of consistent. Maybe boring, but consistent. We're going to use some penetrating oil. I'm going to use a cotton swab because I can get in there. I guess I can actually say Q-tip since this is a Q-tip. But uh, if you're using the generics, I guess it's cotton swab. And you can see we've got a lot of old dirt, and grease, and junk and debris in there. And all of that can trap dirt and salt and micro sands and the like, particularly if you're using it in an ocean environment. So uh, make sure you clean it all out. This is your opportunity. It doesn't take a lot of time to do this. You might as well do it right. And uh, you might as well sleep at night not worrying that uh, while well, you skipped over a step and now, now you got a noisemaker in there for some reason. Okay, we've mopped that up. I'm going to use the paper towel one more time just to clean the, the, the little bit that's left over here. <coughs> and then we can go to the reassembly. So let's start with the pinion gear. Kind of last out is first back in. This is a carrier with the top bearing in it. This is our clutch with our car uh, clutch sleeve. This is the bottom bearing. This is your pinion gear. Wipe the pinion gear off. If you need to, again, go use that uh, penetrating oil. You can see a lot of dirt came off of that dirt and old grease. And once you're satisfied, check the orientation of the teeth, just like we did with the other two gears. Make sure they're not damaged or uh, broken in any way. Now, while I'm putting the new grease on, and I do use fishing wheel grease, I'm using pen precision wheel grease here. I want to encourage you to ask questions. Maybe you're uh, working on a reel and you're stuck. Maybe you have a, an issue with one. You're trying to figure it out, a little problem diagnosis or something. Just uh, leave that question in the comment section of this video, and I will try to, uh, to answer that one for you. Okay, we've got two of the same bearings here. Again, just like we did on the other one, test it. Make sure that they, they roll nice and easily. I'm going to use fishing reel oil for my bearings. This is a shielded bearing, so the oil will get inside there. One of those goes into the carrier here. You're going to notice one side is, is narrower than the other in diameter. That narrow diameter goes down, and it actually creates a little lip here that will accommodate the spacer or the internal sleeve for that anti-reverse. The anti-reverse needs to be kept dry. The bearing goes on, sleeve goes on, clutch. There's two sides of that clutch. One is a plastic side, the other is a metal faced side. The metal faced side is up. Go to your carrier, which has that indent, and you can see that the sleeve is sitting proud, so you need that extra space here. That goes next. And then this whole assembly can be placed back into the reel. Make sure that it is flush when it aligns when you've seated it. If, you, if it's not flush, you haven't seated it properly, and you'll need to go redo that. Go to your parts tray and get those three screws. One of them just dropped on my chair here, so we'll just take a moment and get that screw off here. Don't panic when you do this stuff, but that's another reason for a good video. Sometimes the screw will come out, it'll bounce. You have no idea where it landed, you go back to the videotape, and there it is. Okay, I'm going to start one, not going to tighten it all the way down. Grab a second one. These are Phillips head. And this is why you don't tighten it down. You need a little wiggle room here. To make sure that you can align all of the screws in before you uh, do the full assembly of that. If you tighten one down and you need a little bit of play, then you gotta go back and loosen them all up. So let's do that. All right, this is the top end of the assembly. It's been serviced now. And at this point, we can go put the rotor back on. Now, we haven't serviced the rotor. 
and you don't need to take the bales and the springs and all of that stuff out if the bell if the bale is performing fine and the rotor is turning fine. What I do recommend is again a shot of penetrating oil. It seems to be my kind of jack of all trades on the seams where the bale is going to work and on that line roller. And then just work it in. Flip it back and forth, make sure that it's working nicely. This is also a good opportunity while you have that uh, in that position to go take a moment, go clean your upper assembly here. There's a lot of film and kind of accumulated everything, maybe some fish baits and who knows what's on there. Just take a moment, use a rod and reel cleaner. I'm using a rod and reel cleaner here, it's by Penn. And uh, I'll let it polish it up, it'll clean it and uh, it'll protect it a little bit. All right, just wipe that down. Check underneath. Make sure everything is okay here. A lot of times when you're working on uh, saltwater reels, you're gonna find sand in there. And you can put a drop of oil into that Z bar. There's a little metal bar that'll go up and down. That's what's gonna trip the bale. That's gonna ride on this ramp over here. It's gonna ride up and push the bale to flip. Just take a moment, put a little bit of oil on that. Take your rotor and put that up top. And then we can put the nut on. Of course, we just went to the parts tray for the nut. That was convenient. Make sure that it gets torqued down. I'm actually going to use this with the driver. I think that might have been a little too loose. It's got a carrier in there, but that's okay. Turn it, a quarter turn it, then spin it. Make sure it turns nice and easy. And this one's turned nice and easy. No complaining at all in that reel. So uh, we can move on to the bottom part of this after we put on the tie-down clip. And there's a little screw that's holding the tie-down clip on. I'm going to screw the screw for the crosswind block there. Again, this is a little uh, Phillips head screw. This one wants to fall off. So I'm going to take a little bit of fishing wheel grease there and maybe that'll hold it, help me get it started. So this one's got a legacy, the first spinning reel that uh, Penn made back in the 19, I believe it was 1961. They named the Spin Fisher. And they've had, this is the fifth generation of them. There's a sixth out there now. And there may even be a seventh. I'm not quite sure if that's been released yet or not. I probably have to go take a look. All right, doing the same thing here that we did before, making sure that the teeth on the, the gear Get a lot of grease on it on both sides. This side is going to drive the oscillation gear, and that's the next piece we're going to grease up. We have the oscillation gear. Now you don't have to get grease in every tooth, and you don't have to glob it on. It's going to rip, get thrown off anything that's not going to get used, and while well, you're going to be cleaning the case like you just saw me do before from the excess grease. Grease on the back, in the, in the center hole, on the teeth, and on the front, because this thing is a hard working gear. We can install that next, and when you install it, make sure that the stud from that oscillation gear is facing down. And we'll take that tie-down screw. That's the easiest screw to forget because a lot of times oscillation gears simply slide over that, uh, that center stud. And, uh, well, I'll be guilty. All right, make sure it moves. Next up is your oscillation block. We'll take the grease. We want to make sure it gets in that channel on both sides. And then we can slide the oscillation block over the crosswind here and make sure that the, uh, that the stud on that oscillation gear is inside that track. Once you do that, put some oil onto that little roller there. Take your main gear and install that. And you need to make sure that you mesh the teeth. And keep this low. Don't start turning anything now, because you have to keep this low in order to put your axle shaft in. And if you start turning it and start bringing that up, there is no anti-reverse override on this. And sometimes that block will trap itself 
on the upper end while you're moving that wheel around. Light greasing onto the axle shaft, flat part of the axle shaft facing forward, and then bring it into the crosswind block. I'm going to use this to center it. And I'm going to go to my part straight because I have two small screws there that are the screws that will hold that to the block. I like to put the one on the bottom first, that way if you miss with the top, well, at least they've secured everything that it won't start moving around on you. There's one more that goes to the top. And as you can see, I miss every now and then with that top one. But uh, in this case, we didn't. Okay, so we pretty much have taken the, the working part of this reel apart completely. And uh, now we can put the side case back on. But first, that bearing goes on. Can't we qualify the oil that or not? Too much oil won't hurt in this situation, so I'm going to put a little bit more oil on. Remember, there's a shim washer under there. This is the side case. And this has got some, some greases that have been thrown off of that main gear. Let's clean those up. Then we can turn it around. This is a good time to use your clean on this. It's a lot easier to clean it off the wheel than it is on it. This is a little kitchen scrubby. It's not very, not very abrasive. It does help knock off films and debris without scarring the, uh, the wheel itself. Okay. I got that done. Make sure that that rubber uh, gasket is in there. And line it up. And it should snap nice and firmly in place. Make sure that all of your seams are nice and tight. And then we found out that the four screws are all the same. So it really doesn't matter what hole you put them back in. But I like to use an X pattern in terms of tightening them down so that I keep equal pressure on the case as I reinstall. So let's go up top here. We'll do that one. Come down to the bottom on the opposite side. Then we'll go up top again. And we're getting close. So you can see that the the servicing on this reel is going to take about 20-25 minutes or so. Set aside an hour. It's always good to leave yourself more time than rush. You don't uh, you don't win any points for finishing fast. And, uh, when you set it aside, just uh, do that, and it's going to be good for the season. And, uh, you don't need to to do it often, but uh, you do need to do it. Okay, I'm going to use the flat blade just for that final quarter turn or so, just to make sure that they're all nice and sealed. And one of the things about this reel is it's a little bit more water resistant than uh, in the past, and that's with, because of that uh, um, seal that they put on there, the rubber band seal kind of thing. Take the drag knob off in order to service your spool. Your spool contains the drag washers. There's a pentagon clip in this one. It rides in a groove. Be careful, it's a spring. And uh, from time to time it will shoot if you're not paying attention. This, uh, this one has HT100 washers up top and it also has the sealed system below. <coughs> I'm gonna take care of the one up top here. That's called the slammer drag. That's a little bit of a change to the Prior additions. Tighten that down. Then to do the slammer drag, you need to turn it over and you need a micro screwdriver. And again, this is a sealed system. And it's always interesting when you're dealing in salt water again, it's uh, pretty much an easier thing when. The um, drag is underneath, you're not going to take the water on like you would on most top drag systems. There's three screws that are holding this on. Here's the, the bigger micro.
first one has a click spring on it, so pay attention to that one. Most of the time that screw will stay in that, uh, that little wire loop. And just keep working them, you will get them out eventually. And if you're not seeing this on camera, I do apologize. If you have this reel, you will clearly see what we're doing. But you want to check your drag washers for wear. And you want to make sure that the system is all nice and tight and replaced if anything is needed. I think that should come out now. That screw, put that in here. And we're having just a little bit of a hold up on this one here. That screw that I left in the metal is preventing it from uh, allowing me to remove this. That's two. Here's the third one. They all go into the parts tray. Now your drag system comes out. That's your slammer drag system. You have two washers in here. These are HT100s. Again, you want to do just what you did up top. You can see that there's a lot of dirt and debris in here. So you want to clean that up. Dirt and debris are enemies of drag washers. Okay. These are kind of jammed. I'm going to guess they're jammed with some old greases. So I'm going to take a brush. Pull that through to get the old greases out. And then we can reinstall. That one can go in. These, these serve as eared washers. They have little points. They belong in the points of the spool. This one you can see is sealed as well. We have that same rubber gasket going on there. First one up, then we have a metal. Make sure that that's cleared out. And you want to do the same thing with the second one. You need to see the cross hatching on these. You can't see the cross hatching on this and it's not jammed with grease. And what I'm going to find is that they're worn and they need to be replaced. There is a hex side to this and that hex side needs to match. <clears throat> Sometimes it's actually easier to do it by taking that out. But most of the time what will happen is when you take these out you won't get the eared washer back in. Let's go ahead and put that back on. This is always fun because you got to clear this. This little metal piece has got to come up and out when you're doing this. So just be aware you're going to bring this in. Let's clean the grease from that seal. I'm going to bring this up and under. And then you're going to use a screwdriver to turn that hex until you feel it seat. Not a good size. Once you've seated that, make sure that that metal click uh, pieces there and make sure you use a pick to center the holes for those screws. Now this is always my nervous part, me and those screws don't play well together. I'm going to use a little bit of grease here on the tip of my screwdriver to see if we can't hold that so that we can get it started. Hold your slammer, make sure that your hole is aligned and just get it started. Don't tighten it all the way down because you may need to play here as well in terms of getting all three of those centered. I'm going to do the two that are not the wire first. And that should help bring the wire over now. And we're close. And we should be able to get the third one on now. So this one's a little bit more involved than just pulling the top uh, piece out of your uh, your spring assembly and your drag. But once you do it, 
you kind of like everything else you kind of know know how to do it and there you go all right so the slammer has been in it's been cleaned it's put back together again speaking of cleaning we've got one more little piece here that could use a little cleaning that's the top adjuster knob and let's go put this back together and, together and give it a test so what have we done so far we've completely disassembled this reel we've cleaned it we've uh, shown you how it comes together how it comes apart and uh, how to re-lube it talk a little bit about some of the weak points of it a little bit about how to service these drags and now it's time to give it that final test tighten this up make sure that your drags hold they hold nicely i like to back it off once i do that we have our handle now i'm going to start and then i'm going to use a little drop of oil here where this pivots just to make sure that the pivot stays tight okay we're all set let's see what we did oh well there you go that's a nice operating pen 6500 ss uh, spin fisher reel I always seem to manage to get the high points when I do that. There you go. So your pen, pen Spin Fisher 5, 6500, large saltwater reel, and uh, that's how you do it. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for all it is that you do to keep us safe. Police, fire, rescue, everybody involved in public safety, thank you. And, uh, well, to everybody, uh, don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. Take your tackle and uh, well, give it a try if you if you think you have that mechanical ability. If you don't, it's a good time to get it serviced now. Spring season will be on us soon, and you want to make sure that you don't miss that first run. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, wishing everybody a great day. Thanks for watching.